Here's another example that will introduce the ideas of two-sided or two-tailed tests. Here, what I've got is the hypothesis will be mu equals mu naught versus mu not equal to mu naught. So essentially, I'm looking for a p-value here, not just on one side, but on both sides. As an example over here, producer of steel cables wants to determine whether the steel cables it produces has a mean breaking strength of 5,000 tons. Average breaking strength of less than that means that this is too weak, and to produce stronger than that would mean we incur extra costs. So we want to be, to be exactly essentially 5,000, not too large, not too small. So a random sample of 64 cables gives us a sample mean of that much and a standard deviation of that much. What do you conclude? So we're going to try it at both 5% and 1% level of significance. <clears throat> so, let's define our variable first. So let mu equal the mean breaking strength of the cables. I'll be short here, but you can write out more fully if you wish. So my hypothesis are going to be mu equals 5,000, which is what I'm aiming at. And h1 here is, I don't want it to be too strong or too weak, so this is going to be mu not equal to 5,000. Either too strong or too weak isn't good enough for me. So this is a two-sided test. So nothing much more changes from here. My test statistic is still the same as before, and that I'm looking at a t statistic here. This the standardized sample mean x bar minus mu over s on root of 64. So that's t 63. <coughs> And these are approximate distributions, if, if I can't assume the multi, if I can assume the multi, these are exact. So here, what I've got from my data is x bar is 5158.3. My sample size, s was 4, sorry, my standard deviation is 498.2. And my sample size, n is 64. So the observed value of my t statistic here, I put all the numbers in, it's 5158.3 minus the h naught value, that's 5000, the equal value, over s on root 10, so that's my 498.2 over the root of 64. And that comes to 2.54. <coughs> So the idea here is that I've got a value here of 2.54. And that, if I consider extreme on the upper side, I would equally think something on the lower side to be just as extreme. So negative 2.54 would be considered extreme as well. So my p-value is based on both sides. So here is my T63 distribution. So my p-value is based not just probability of bigger than 2.54, but also less than, and I can write less than negative 2.54, I can write this in this form, as t bigger than 2.54 in absolute value. Essentially, what I get is, what I actually have is 2.54 is my observed value, so I can take that probability and multiply it by 2 by symmetry. In this case, that comes to 0 0.0136. Now, 
I'll test this at the 5% at the one, and the 1% level of significance. So first of all, if I use 5%, my p-value here is less than 0 0.05. So here there is sufficient evidence to reject H0. So we will reject the null hypothesis. So here, <coughs> that means the main breaking strength is not 5,000 tons. But the values I've got was more than that, so in that case I conclude it's more than that. Since x bar is bigger than 5,000, 5, I observed bigger values than 5,000 on average. We conclude the mean breaking strength is larger or greater than 5,000. So if you conclude it's not 5,000, it's either more than or less than, it can't be both, yeah? So you conclude here mean breaking strength is more than 5,000 tons. If I test the same hypothesis at the 1% level of significance, here the p-value is, is bigger than 0 0.01. <coughs> I've got 0 0.0136, only just, but still bigger than that. So here we will fail to reject H0. at the 1% level of significance. And so here we'll conclude the mean breaking strength is not different <coughs> from 5,000. Which is the more appropriate test? <coughs> that depends on the context. If you're really serious about making sure it is 5,000, you will test the thing at a higher level of at, at a lower level of significance. So, in other words, if you if you're, pretty, if you're pretty keen to maintain or keep the null hypothesis, then you reduce your significance level. So it's more unlikely that you'll reject H naught. So this is a matter of decision and choice that you make when you state the hypothesis and how strongly you want to hold on to the null hypothesis. So here's a note though, that normally or usually you'd go for a one-sided hypothesis. So it is always better because you know and have some expectation of the kind of changes we're expecting. So it's always better to perform a one-sided hypothesis test.
as the expected change is usually known. It's only when you've got no idea at all that you would state a two-step or two-step hypothesis. Because usually, and if you do an experiment of some kind, you're doing it for a particular purpose, you're looking at how things will change. So it's usually better if you state and test a one-sided hypothesis test, otherwise you'll have problems. Now, also if you look at this, you'll find that the conclusions I've got for the 5% and the 1% are different. And of course, that's just because of my significance level changing. So at different significance levels, you will have different conclusions. But you'll choose significance levels before you conduct the test. Not prior, not post because you can otherwise cheat and decide by looking at significance level where you reject or not reject. So the trend is in any way, whether wh whatever significance level you use, you will state the p-value so others can look at the p-value and decide for themselves whether the p-value is small enough or, or in that case maybe large enough, whatever they want to decide. So p-value is always stated in this case. <clears throat> Just some uh, final notes here. Assumptions here. If my sample size is small, I will need to assume population comes from some normal distribution. Otherwise, the T and minus 1 distribution can't be used. And again, exact value of p-values, of course, will be obtained from R tables. The choice of hypothesis comes from the problem at hand. So if I'm saying something like not exceeding or safe level or is better than, I'm going for a one-sided that is better than higher. If I'm saying anything at least, not less than, then of course I'm looking at less than as my alternative. And if I'm looking at no change, this is going to be equals versus not equal. So again, one-sided if possible. If I want not exceeding, that means I will not be exceeding it. That means my H0 will be equals and my H1 will be bigger than. At least not less than, that means my H1 will tell me that that's what I'm aiming for, less than, not, not more than this. <coughs> For two-sided tests, we use significance level of 0 0.05 and one-sided 0 0.025, and that's simple to see because essentially what's going on here is I've got a two-sided test. If it's if it's one-sided and I'm using 0 0.025 as my significance level, when I go two-sided, of course I'll just double this up. So I get another one over here here is 0 0.025, and that should be used consistently. Whatever you use for your two-sided test, use half of that for your one-sided test. Otherwise, you get inconsistencies. <coughs> and you'll make it problems. And finally, confidence levels and hypothesis tests are related. If I'm looking at a two-sided test, and uh, H0 is rejected, and then the 1 minus alpha percent, if I reject H0 as the alpha level of significance, so this is for 5 percent, then this would be 95 percent, then this corresponding confidence interval will not contain mu naught, that value there. If I fail to reject H naught, then I'll find the value of mu naught in that confidence interval. And if I'm looking at a two-sided test, of course, then I need to halve the significance level and then find myself again a 1 minus alpha percent confidence level. So in this case, this will be 2.5%. And this is 95% still. So we can use those ideas, and we'll see some of those examples later on in our lectures. Finally, <coughs> the conclusion must be in terms of context. Don't just say reject or accept. It doesn't make any sense. You must relate this back to the context and the question at hand. And so it'll be in terms of some opportunities, or action plan, or whatever else, some action you have to take, some, some of the decisions you have to make. The consequences of types of error must also be discussed, and you'll find this in questions arising, and then we'll discuss it later on. And finally, statistical significance, significance does not imply scientific or medical or whatever other context-based significance. So, if, for example, if I'm having a look at some kind of drug that reduces cholesterol by 0.1, that may be significant statistically, but there's of no consequence medically. A 0.1 reduction in, con in cholesterol level means nothing at all. So, statistical significance does not necessarily imply the context-based significance, and that must be discussed separately. That's all. The example here, you can try yourself, and we'll see that in lectures afterwards. Thank you.